Welcome to the six part mini tutorial series where I take you through the process of creating a stylized game asset. The series assumes that you have an understanding of Maya and you have an understanding of Substance Painter. If you'd like to learn more about 3D or if you would like to learn more about the softwares, check out our courses on Udemy. You can find a link for that down in the description. In this section of the tutorial series, we're going to take a look at how we can export our asset from Substance Painter utilizing the Unity Universal Pipeline presets. Then we're going to bring it into Maya and we're going to hook up our textures to see how we can preview it inside of Maya to check how our final asset looks. All right, so we're going to call our stylized barrel done here. So now it's time to get out of here and go back into Maya. Uh, what I'm going to show you guys is kind of a way to preview Unity assets. Unity is the main game engine I worked in professionally. Uh, so I'm going to stick to that. Now, the way we do this is we come up here to our file, export textures, and you're going to want to find the uh, output directory. So we're going to place this into our Maya project folder. So I'm going to navigate into the folder here, into my source images, into my barrel, and just hit select folder. Then we want to pick our output template. And this is very important because it's going to be uh, what one you are going to use inside of your application or your game engine if you're doing games. Now, the Unity one that I've worked with the most is the Universal Render Pipeline uh, Metallic Standard. So I'm going to go with that one. Uh, we're going to do PNGs, that's very common in the mobile industry, and then size. Now, size here, you have to decide how big you're going to be. If you're going into a AAA video game, you know, 1024 is probably going to be fine. That's what we were really queued at. If you're going to go down the route of mobile, you're going to be somewhere in between 512, 256 to 128. I'll go ahead and kick this out at 512 just to see what it looks like. For dilation, just go ahead and set that to infinite and hit export, and you're good to go. Now, if we go ahead and hop back into Maya, we're all done in here. Uh, we can hook this up. Uh, you can delete your barrel high, your barrel low. Uh, you can combine your existing barrels. So you can do a mesh combine on these. It's okay if you leave these separate, but uh, they do get counted as individual vertices. So it's probably better to just highlight these and do an edit mesh uh, merge. So that way they are all one. And we can go ahead and delete the history there. To preview this, you're going to want to assign a new material. And if you're using the metalness workflow, go with Maya standard surface shader. That's going to be your best option. You can hook that up. Now in the standard surface under color, you can just link this into the file, link that right in there. But before you do, you might want to rename things. All right, so I'm going to navigate into these and I'm just going to name this uh, stylized barrel. Then we'll go ahead and name this one uh, Stylized Barrel Metalness. And I'm just going to copy this to achieve this quickly. I'm going to rename, right click copy, and then we're going to rename paste. And we'll just name this Metalness. And then we can come in here and rename this Normal. And we might actually edit the normal map, but we'll get to that when we get there. Uh, so here, I'm just going to come to my barrel textures. We'll go ahead and plop in our barrel color. Hit the six key to turn on your textures and you're going to notice that's really dark. So what we're going to do is create a light. We'll create a quick directional light. Turn on the light switch here and aim it so we can see our object. You're going to set the intensity maybe up to something like three. Um, and then something else that can help is to come up here to Arnold lights and use a sky dome light. And by default, it will just use sort of an ambient occlusion based light, which is fine for what we're doing currently, but you could get an IBL to make this look a bit nicer. Now, you notice this doesn't quite look great, and that's because we did design this to use a normal map. So let's navigate down here to our geometry input, go to bump mapping, go to file inside of here, set this to tangent and hit the little over arrow. And then in here, we're going to go into barrel and grab our normals. And if you're using Maya, you'll want to switch the color space to Utility Raw to preview that. And I'm actually going to turn off the uh, background for now, just so we can see this, you know, kind of nicely here. Um, that or, you know, if I bring in the Sky Dome light, uh, maybe we just tone this down a lot so we get more of an ambient feel to it, like 0.2 or 0.1, and uh, really let this directional take effect. But you can see now that nice normal map is in here. We're getting that nice directionality. And remember, this is at 512, so it's not quite as crisp as it could be. But uh, yeah, and remember, this is our geometry, right? So 
really basic. We're really getting a lot of mileage out of these textures out of this normal map, which is great. Now, the last thing is the metallic map. We're going to have to go into Hypershade for this because Unity does some weird stuff. Uh, if you want to get rid of your ID maps at this point as well, you can do a quick file optimize scene size. I'll get rid of your ID maps. But coming into here, let's go through uh, some of the things you have to do to get uh, this to work right. So the first thing is it is going to be a single channel input. So I'm going to call this in by hitting tab and just typing in file to bring in a file texture. And we're going to link this up here and go into barrel and metalness. And this is going to be divided into two. Your out color is going to be your metalness and your out alpha is going to be your roughness. Now, if we go ahead and take the out color here, we can type in luminance and we can just link the out color to this luminance and then we can take this luminance into the metalness. Luminance, if you're not familiar, simply converts three channel information into a single channel information. There's other ways to hook this up, but my preference is through luminance. And at this point, you'll see we have that nice metalness hook up in there. Exactly what we want. Metals look metal and, uh, you know, wood looks wood. The next step is the roughness. Now, with the roughness, in theory, you could just take the out alpha to the specular roughness, but you're going to notice an issue if you do this. Uh, first off, you want to make sure your weight's at one, but you'll notice it's not quite what you expect. My wood's really shiny and, uh, well, my metal's not. So this is one of those weird quirks to the Unity export. The roughness channel is inverted in Unity. So that's something to be aware of. The reason why is it's not a metallic roughness map, it's a metallic gloss map. Gloss isn't the inverse of roughness, it's the older setup. So what we have to do to get this working if you're using the uh, universal pipeline is you have to get in here and grab a reverse node, which is the same as an invert. And the inputs just input your out alpha into the X, Y, and Z channel. You could probably just do one to one, but I like to do all three and then pipe this into a luminance node because we're converting three channel data into or one channel data into three. Uh, and then with the luminance, we can pipe that into specular roughness. And what this should give you is how this is going to look in your game engine. So now we have a look at our object and that's going to be roughly how it's going to look in Unity. Now, remember, this is with 512 textures. So I did down res those. Um, that's probably helping my hand paint the textures a bit. Uh, but there you have it. So I'm going to do a quick save scene as. We're going to go ahead and save this as barrel textured. And as one last pass here, we could actually enhance the normals a little bit. Uh, let me go ahead and open up Photoshop. And we're going to create a new normal map out of the color. So if we take a look at the normals currently, the normals are going to be very flat for this, right? We don't have any indication on the metals, any indication on the wood of any detail. So what I'm going to do is navigate to a website that I really like called Smart Normal. Smart Normal allows us to convert images into textures. And uh, it has some limits, but for game art, it works really well. So we can navigate over here to Smart Normals. We could load. And I'm going to load in my stylized barrel, the actual color map. And you'll see what this will do is it'll convert that color information to normal information. And we could use this dial here to make it more or less dramatic. I'm going to push it up quite a bit just to get a nice look here. And uh, we can save. I will just save this out as normal details. And then over here in Photoshop, we can bring in our stylized barrel normals. We can bring in our normal details. And to combine these, I'll just double click on this layer to access layer styles. Under the blending uh, styles up here, the blending options, we're going to turn off blue. You want to disable the blue channel. And then just come in here and do an overlay. And what this will do is it'll overlay that detail onto our existing detail. And now we'll have detail that corresponds to our painted texture. And I could do a quick file, save as, and I'm gonna just make this its own file, stylized bare normal, but as a Photoshop document. And that's because I wanna preserve the original. Uh, I could do some file management to make it so um, that's not necessarily the case, uh, but there we go. So we can kick that into here. 
and we can set this to utilities raw and you'll see now we get some of that normal detail. Now this is a bit too strong, uh, like a lot too strong, but you can see how that correlates one to one with our painted detail quite nicely, a little bit better than what we were getting inside of Substance Bay Air. So how do we fix this? Well, the nice thing is with this setup, we can just dial this back. So let's say maybe 50%, we could save, hop back into here and double click. And you can see now that's dialed back 50%. So now we're just getting some roughness across there. I might even take it lower, maybe something like 25%, save, and then come in here and uh, dial that back even further inside of here. So we're just getting a little bit of roughness detail, uh, a little bit of normal map detail into there. And there you go. So that's a nice little finish we can do on there, you know, externally. Remember, you can always edit your textures outside of Substance Painter. If there's something easier to do in Photoshop, by all means do it. If there's something easier to do in Substance Painter, by all means do it. All right. So from here, you know, we could take this, we could do a nice little rendering. Uh, one thing we might want to do is just some further optimization. For example, up here, we don't really need this vertice. So we could come in here to uh, target weld and we can target weld this to the backside here, like so. And that shouldn't have a big impact on our textures. And I'll just do the same thing here. Just target weld that to the backside. You'll notice there's a slight shift there in texturing, and uh, that's because the normals are shifting. I'm pretty sure we have to come in here and harden these ones because these were separate pieces. So let me just grab all of these and do a mesh display harden. And you'll see we get that line back reclaim that detail and we'll do the same down here. So just be mindful when you're doing an optimization pass that you do have to uh, pay attention to your normals because making edits will change those. But that'll just make the poly count a little bit lower. And if we really wanted to like go super low poly, we could probably delete these and that would still hold up as a nice little stylized barrel from a distance. I like the roundness we had though, so I'm gonna keep it. And uh, there you have it. We have our own little stylized asset. So just like that, you can see how that normal map detail is coming in there now with our hand painted. Also notice my horrendous hand painting doesn't look so bad once it's down, down res to uh, 512 by 512. Um, so yeah, it's just things to keep in mind. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this little uh, mini tutorial session on how to create a stylized game asset using Maya and Substance Painter. Hopefully you gained a bit of knowledge from it. Uh, you know, feel free to throw any questions you have down in the comments and I will check that out and uh, hopefully see you for the next mini project that I decide to tackle after work. <laughs> All right, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed it and learned some new stuff and are looking forward to future content. Thank you for watching this tutorial series. Be sure to like and subscribe for future content.